it's fair to say the last few years haven't been too kind to Wigan Athletic. Traditionally a lower league club, having only been promoted to the Football League in 1978, they achieved something I never have back in 1995, a tycoon takeover. Seriously, Sports Interactive, it's been 25 plus years, I would like a tycoon takeover at some point, please. Backed by the millions of JJB owner Dave Whelan, they won the third division in 1997, moved into a shiny new 25,000 all-seater stadium in 1999, before being promoted again, this time to the Premier League, in 2005. They managed to stay in the top flight for eight seasons, reaching the League Cup final in 2006 and winning their first ever and still only major trophy, the FA Cup in 2013, just eight days before they were relegated, making them one of only a small handful of English teams to play in Europe whilst not being in the Premier League. They were relegated again to League One two years later, immediately won the title to return to the Championship, before then getting immediately relegated again and then winning League One again in 2018. At the end of that promotion season, it was announced that the club had been sold, ending the Whelan family's 23-year association with the club, and under new ownership, Wigan survived in the Championship in 2019, finishing in 18th place. Then things got messy. The club was sold again in June 2020, but less than a month later, with them sitting in 14th place in the championship and eight points clear of relegation in that season that was delayed because of the pandemic, they announced they'd gone into administration as the new owners had refused to invest the money that they'd promised as part of the takeover. The subsequent 12-point deduction was enough to relegate them back down to League One. They narrowly escaped another relegation the following season, ultimately finishing in 20th place in League One, just one point above the relegation places, during a season that was basically all about the multiple new takeover bids that all kept failing and the club almost went out of business before it was eventually saved by the completion of another takeover in March 2021. Under that new ownership, they once again won the League One title in 2022, earning promotion back to the championship before announcing huge losses in March of 2023 and subsequently announcing that there would be a temporary delay in meeting wage obligations. Already bottom of the championship by this point, they were handed a three-point deduction for failing to pay their players' wages. After that inevitable relegation back to League One in May 2023, they were then hit with two further point deductions for the upcoming season. Four points for failing to pay player wages again, followed by yet another four-point deduction for once again failing to pay the player wages the following month. And then that summer, 2023, this summer just gone, saw the club placed under a transfer embargo, this time for not paying tax. And three days later, HMRC lodged a winding up petition over that unpaid tax with a hearing date set for the end of July. This was serious stuff. If they'd have made it to that hearing without new, new ownership, new investment, they would have ceased to exist. But they were once again subject to a takeover in June. I've lost count of how many takeovers this is, this is at this point. It's madness. This one was in June a month before that scheduled hearing by Wigan-born billionaire Mike Danson, who proceeded to pay the unpaid tax and wages, saving the club for the second time in two years. And with that, the transfer embargo ended shortly after, and they were set to start the new league season with that eight-point deduction. We're now about halfway through that season, and they're down in 19th place, four points outside of the relegation zone. But under new ownership, again, if any club ever needed a rebuild, it's this one. But it is a big job. So I'm giving myself 10 seasons rather than the usual five. That's 10 seasons to get Wigan back into the Premier League as an established top flight club without financially ruining them along the way. And here we are then, folks. Easy peasy, right? Starting the season with that points deduction. Uh, one of two teams in League One with a points deduction, actually. We've got eight points and Reading have a four-point deduction. The media, um, if we can click on them, think we're going to finish 19th. So we should avoid relegation this year. I mean, ideally, we'd be, if we're going to be back in the Premier League, established in the Premier League in 10 years, we obviously want to be getting promoted sooner rather than later. But that is easier said than done when there is very little money knocking around. Obviously, in real life, the club had that transfer embargo and there is very little money involved in uh, being able to do anything 
pre-season, £20,000 of transfer budget, a wage budget that's almost already maxed out, and a best 11 that I guess looks a bit like this. High points, definitely. Mr. Tickle in goal. The fact we've got a goalkeeper called Mr. Tickle. Forget all of Wigan's problems. This is basically the reason that I wanted to do this save. Mr. Tickle is, uh, I mean, he's effectively a homegrown boy here at Wigan. Um, not actually really played at all prior to this season, just that one appearance in the championship. Um, although he has been playing for them this season in real life, I believe, and he will be our first choice goalkeeper. That's for sure. Other bright points, Charlie Hughes, another homegrown boy, 19 years old, lots of potential. If we can keep hold of him, which I don't even know if keeping hold of him is the right thing to do, because if we can get anywhere near £5 million for him now, that's rebuild money. So if we can keep hold of him, he should be great long term, potentially Premier Division standard, although we might just sell him to, you know, fund the rebuild. Um, we've got a couple of other decent players as well. I mean, Callum Lang as a striker, another homegrown. It looks like there's a very decent youth set up here. Um, and in actual fact, I think looking at some of the clauses that we've got, you've seen the amount of players that I didn't mention in the intro that the club have had to sell on in recent years because of the financial problems. Alfie Devine was sold to Spurs at the height of one of the financial mess ups. Uh, Joe Gelhart was sold to Leeds, similar kind of time. There's there's definitely been uh, there's definitely been players that have been moved on as a result of the financial problems as well. So fingers crossed we can keep things going with some decent young players coming through as well. Is that Jamie Carragher's kid? Probably. What are the chances of there being more than one family called Carragher in the world? As far as I'm concerned, fairly slim. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything pre-season with the budget that we've got. Let's find out. Well, we did sell a player to fund a rebuild. It wasn't the one that we said. It's this guy, Stephen Humphreys, um, who didn't want to be at the club. He was actually loaned out to Hearts last season. So really, really didn't want to be at the club. Didn't want anything to do with this relegation that was taking place last year, presumably. And he has moved on to Bristol City for £900,000. So that put a little bit of spending money in the kitty. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much all still there because <laughs> there's... There was just, there was so little that was available that for any kind of reason price. League One is an insane league where players who would genuinely improve us would cost like half a million, a million pounds. I ain't paying that. That's madness. We did sign this guy. We spent money on him, Owen Dale, £26,500. That's the kind of spending that we're looking for. And the rest of it was really just a bunch of free transfers, the majority of which are kind of just youngsters for the future. We're taking a little bit of a gamble on them, trying to get a bit of money flow going, bring in some young players that even if we don't end up using, we can then potentially sell on. That, I think, is going to be a crucial part of the plan. Season-wise, we've started we've started pretty well. As you can see, majority of wins, playing pretty good football. We are still down in 21st place in the league. But remember, that's with an eight-point deduction. If you add the eight points back on, we're actually demonstrating the kind of form that would put us up there in third or fourth place. So we seem to have put together a half-decent team. If we have a look at what the best 11 is now, based on the signings that we've made... One one guy. One guy. We only really signed one guy for the first team. But form looks good. Let's see how we get on first season. So close. So near. Yet so far. We've finished third in the league. If we again, if we'd have had our eight points, we'd have won the league. Not Strictly fair, because Reading, who also had a points deduction, um, finished top. So if there'd have been no points deductions, we'd have finished second behind Reading because they'd have got their four points back to get them to 91 points. We'd have got our eight points back to get us to 88 and Blackpool would have missed out. Uh, but we uh, we did finish third. I'm Kev. So obviously we managed to completely balls up the playoffs as well. And in fact, our form in the running was, was awful. Like really, really Poor form. Uh, Player-wise, our top scorers, I mean, we certainly shared the goals around. Charlie Wick 
who is an old man who we're probably not going to want to persist with for too much longer, um, but he got 21 goals. Uh, this guy, Marshall Godo, who's on loan from Fulham, uh, weighing in with 20 goals as well. Callum Lang, who we looked at before, the homegrown boy, 20 goals from him, and his value is now looking ripe for selling and proving that I am, in fact, a transfer genius, the one man I spent money on, Owen Dale. 14 goals, 22 assists. That's how you spend 26 grand, boys and girls. And to be fair, we've now set down a benchmark. We spent 26 grand on him. He's now worth up to 5 million. This is why we're not going to throw loads of money around and spend half a million pounds on players because that's absolute madness. What we are going to have to do, um, what we usually have to do is deal with players who are unhappy. We don't actually have anyone who's unhappy. Obviously, I'm simming these seasons. I think you probably already knew that anyway. I'm not going to sit here and play through every match for 10 seasons, but usually when you sim seasons, you end the season with a whole load of players who are unhappy. We don't seem to have anybody, so... Positive, I guess. We can we can take the majority of this squad or anyone we want from this squad into next season. We're obviously going to lose the loans. They're going to go back to their parent clubs. Some of them we're going to miss more than others. Marshall Godo, in particular, is somebody who we're definitely going to miss. But then the players who are out of contract, it's a lot of the players that we aren't really going to want to keep, the kind of two one-and-a-half-star players. Um, the guys who are under contract is this bulk of players here, if I can actually highlight them, this bunch of players down the bottom here are the guys who were under contract. If we then sort that by ability, you can see the highlighted ones. The players who are under contract are the best players at the club. We have got a seriously good base to build on. Um, we've obviously got the money left over from last season. I mean, we could probably um, go forward a bit and find out what our budget's going to be. There you go. So our budget for the upcoming season is the same. This is why, boys and girls, you always spend the money. Because if you don't spend your money, that's all you get for your budget the next season. But, you know, 800 grand is something to work with. We've got some saleable assets as well. Charlie Hughes, who we looked at before, we didn't sell him last summer. He's now worth twice as much this summer with some very big club sniffing. If we were to get £10 million for him... That, again, just like 5 million last year would have been, 10 million this year, very much, is rebuild money. But I kind of like the idea of keeping them around. I mean, I like the fact it's our homegrown boys who are the most valuable players at the club. Let's have, a, let's have a play around. Let's do some transfers. So we did a little bit in the way of transfers um, just before the season ticked over, the most notable of which was this guy, Sean Fusia, Fusire, Fusia. Not really sure. He's a right back, a young right back with potential. We spent 165 grand to bring him in for Sheffield Wednesday. He's only got two stars of current ability. That's what 165 grand gets you. Transfers are really difficult in League One. Um, but we did do a few more. Alex Mitchell has joined for 300,000. He's a centre back who comes in from Millwall, had a loan with Lincoln in this league last year. So um, fingers crossed, we'll, uh, we'll be up to speed relatively quickly. He's six foot three. I like a big boy at the back. Um, and we also signed Malik Wilkes for £165,000 from Sheffield Wednesday. He's been up at championship level, not really playing for the last few years, but does have a lot of previous as a really good League One player. That loan with Doncaster, really, really good. That season with Hull in League One, really, really good. He's one of those players who's really good for League One, probably not quite championship level. Um, but to get him in definitely works for me. And those transfers were funded uh, with the sale of Stephen Sessignon. Um, he didn't want to renew his contract, so it was either let him go um, now or let him go for free in the summer. So we've got £1.1 million for him, um, which obviously allowed us to then do this. We've also picked up some pretty decent free transfers as well. Ibrahima Kebe in particular looks like he could be a good one. Three and a half stars of current ability, four stars of potential. Did play five games in La Liga last year, which is very, very fancy. Christian Capone as well, a 25-year-old Italian winger who last year, three games in Serie A. Um, some nice little free transfers. Slobodan Tedic, a Man City youngster who was out on loan at Charlton in League One last year um, and has started this season great for us as our new striker. Four goals from his first five appearances and averaging a 7.93. Um, and also youngster Owen Beck on loan from Liverpool 
always a useful player at this level in football managers. So lots of jolly nice signings. A very, very nice start to the season as well. We've won all of our league games. We have been knocked out of the Carabao Cup, but who cares about that? And with five games gone, we've won all five of them. We're second in the league, just behind Derby. The media think we're top half. I, I mean, we're, we're getting promoted, aren't we? Obviously, we're getting promoted. Uh, Money-wise, there is loads of money left in the bank um, because of the sales that we've made. I mean, we haven't sold £3 million of a player. What we have done is got rid of a lot of wages off the wage budget. So I guess that's that's where this extra, extra money... It's madness, isn't it? Uh, Wigan, absolute madness. But, you know, we're keeping the debts under control in so much as there aren't any. I could go and spend that three million. That would be bananas based on the last few years of Wigan Athletic. Um, if we have a look at what our best 11 is now, I would say that's definitely an upgrade on where we were previously. Mr. Tickle, still in goal. What a hero. Love him. Love him so much. And of course, as predicted, we did win the league 92 points enough to win us the league title um if we have a look at in fact should i show you the league table there you go there's the league derby fell off didn't they they were they were five from five with us at the uh at the start of the season they fell off massively but we have won the league 92 points sean clare our right back or one of our right backs was the best player in the division 7.34 average rating for him he's also got 14 assists from right back which is Really rather impressive. Um, we didn't have anyone in the Dream 11, which is interesting for us to win the league without anybody in the Dream 11. There's Miles Lieburn. That's a familiar name for anyone who's been watching non need to legend If we look at who our best players were, um, Thelo Asgard, um, who is another one who's come through our youth system. This youth setup at Wigan is incredible. I hope we start to benefit. We're doing, we're doing the 10-year save here. We should start to benefit from some of these young players coming through, not just the ones who were already here. But he's played over 150 games for us now, 15 goals for us this season, a real breakout year for him. Callum Lang, again, scoring goals for us, 17 goals from him. Um, Tedich, who we talked about before, ended the season with 18 goals. New boy Capone, 13 goals. Owen Dale, Still demonstrating that I'm a transfer genius. 23 goal contributions from him this year. We've already talked about Claire getting loads of assists. And if we look at who the best players were rating-wise, it's the same guys again. This is all good stuff. Um, we did fail FFP. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I mean, we barely fa we failed FFP by 2.8K and we literally just failed it um, because of promotion boosts. It's fine. We are currently under transfer embargo. I think, I think getting promoted, the embargo will be removed because I think once we're in the championship, we then have to follow the championship FFP rules, which we haven't broken. We've only broken the League One FFP rules. And I don't think this is a, a timed transfer embargo. It's a transfer embargo until we're back inside FFP regulation. So as soon as we're officially promoted, we're not failing FFP anymore. So we haven't lost £15 million, I don't think. We certainly haven't since I've been in charge. So we should be fine for doing transfers this summer. I've got loads of money to spend. I'd like to spend it. To the championship. Well, we ended up not spending as much of it as I would have liked. My theory was correct. The transfer embargo, as soon as we moved up a league, was removed. But we've ended up with a net transfer profit on a season where we've made it back to the championship. Like I say, I am not only putting Wigan back in the Premier League in this save. I am doing it without causing us any financial problems. That's the plan. So we sold two of our big players from the last couple of years. Matthew Smith, who's been a bit of a star for us in central midfield, has gone to Levante for £1.2 million. Both of these were very close to deadline day as well. Owen Dale. I mean, it wasn't quite the £5 million we maybe could have got for him, but I think that's still a very good piece of business. Signing for thirty-five grand, um, he got well into double figures for both goals and assists both seasons averaged over a seven for us hadn't necessarily made the step up to the championship to get a million pounds for him is good financial business we didn't actually spend big 
on anybody. Most of our, or all of the fees that we paid were fee-paying loans um, to get some fancy young Premier League players in. But what we have done is signed some real talent on free transfers. Alex Robertson, probably the standout signing of the summer. He's a 22-year-old Australian international Three and a half stars of current ability, four star potential. He was at Manchester City. He'd been out on loan at Portsmouth and then West Brom last season. We've had to pay him a lot. We are he's probably, I think, the highest paid player now at the club. Um, but I would suggest, just purely based on quality, worth every penny. He's not even the highest paid player. Bashir Humphreys, who's on loan for the season from Chelsea. We paid a quarter of a million pounds to take this guy on loan. He's actually the highest paid player at the club. Uh, Jason Kerr, who's been with us all along, is right up there as well. And then it is Alex Robertson and one of our new defenders, David Zima, um, a four-star current ability centre-back who we brought in from Torino. He played 32 games for Torino in Serie A last season and is now playing for us in the Championship. That seems to me to be quite the upgrade if we have a look at who our best players are it's good to see that our own youngsters are still right up there as well charlie hughes continues to get better and better we've not sold him yet the fact we've not sold him now means i kind of want to keep him forever if he's genuinely going to become a uh it doesn't mention it anymore but a premier league quality player i want him to be with me in the premier league he's played 100 games for us already uh 21 years old that's a future premier league captain right there surely and we've also got uh, mr tickle still very much our first choice goalkeeper he's now worth 10 million pounds as well and has just made the step up and looks awesome the one who i worry a little about callum lang he's now 26 so he's not as young as the other two he did come through the youth system and to be fair he started the season quite well but you know me and star ratings, he's starting to fall down the pecking order. Um, Asgard as well is the other one who is homegrown, isn't he? Uh, but he, again, his star rating starting to fall off a little bit. We'll see. We've started the season okay. I mean, it was it was a bit of a struggle initially. We have won our last couple of games, though, including just putting five goals past Norwich, which means five games in, we're in mid-table. We're Wigan. We will take a mid-table championship finish, our first season back at this level. The media think we should be just good enough to escape relegation. And money-wise, we have now got an overdraft, which we're not going to worry about. Um, just as well, we didn't spend all that money. We put it all into wage budget, which, again, going to be quite the theme, piling all the money into wage budget, because we want to be able to attract the likes of, the likes of Robertson, the likes of Zima, the likes of Capone, who of course we got last year, didn't we? So he's now into his second year at the club. These are the kind of players we want to be able to bring in. And then players ain't cheap. And that'll do. That'll do nicely. Three years in, mid-table in the championship, a 16th place finish. Slow and steady. Slow and steady is what we're looking for. Alex Robertson has finished as our top scorer. So justifying all the money that we're paying him, 14 goals and six assists for a team like Wigan from midfield in the championship is Awesome. He's finished our top score. Tedic making it into double figures as well. Malik Wilkes making a liar of me, showing that he can be half decent in the championship as well. Um, even though I started the season loaning him out to Fleetwood and then called him back just before deadline day because I realised we didn't actually have enough players in his position. But I had kind of decided to bid him off based on what I'd been saying before about him never making it in the championship. And what do you know? He made it in the championship. And Callum Lang... Still doing all right. 19 goal contributions. It's not quite free scoring, is it? But it's it's better than nothing. What we don't have is a real big assist maker this season or anybody with a particularly high <laughs> average rating, which, I mean, we finished in the bottom half of the table. I guess that's fine. Love the fact that Mr. Tickle is now considered the best player at the club. Charlie Hughes is still right up there as well. And we've got some of these free transfers that we brought in last summer demonstrating that this is definitely the plan. We want to be working with free transfers, our own homegrown player, and then pick out these youngsters as and when we can as well. So Bailey Rice um, was the Matthew Smith replacement, came in and was great on loan from Rangers. Leo Shaha um, was on loan from Newcastle and was really good for us at right back. So the, this is kind of what we don't really want to be spending spending money on transfer fees if we can avoid it. Certainly not yet. A, because we don't really have any. And B, because I just don't think it's value. I think the value at this level is free transfers and loans. Certainly until we're in the Premier League. So 
That's what we're going to look to do again. Look, I know I said I wasn't going to spend money on transfers, and you can see there that we spent £4 million on transfers, but... You can also see we sold £11 million off a player, the biggest fee of which was £10 million for David Zima. Um, and this, this is going to be absolutely crucial for us. Having players like this who we can bring in on free transfers, get a season or two out of and then sell on for big money, that is huge. I mean, there's no re there is absolutely no reason this guy should have signed for us in the first place. He played a full season in Serie A for Torino, joined us on a free transfer, did a full season with us in the Championship. Now he's gone back to Serie A for £10 million. Thank you very much. Pleasure doing business with you, sir. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, we also sold Malik Wilkes. He's gone to Charlton for a little bit more than we paid from him. Playing well in the championship again. We fixed Malik Wilkes. We saved his career. You're welcome. Um, and then there's a few other players who've left on loan. Uh, Baba Adiko, um, who had been with us. He's another one who came through our youth system. Kind of drifted out of the first team mix. As time went on, we brought in a couple of players. Kebe, in particular, played in his position, was just better at it than he was. So we've let one of our own youngsters go. £650,000 to QPR. It's going to happen as the club grows. Um, but we have, uh, we have, as I say, spent some money. The biggest of which was on Ahmed Diallo from Manchester United. Um, £2.9 million. He, of course, had a fantastic loan at Sunderland, getting all those goals a few years ago. He's been around the Manchester United squad in the Premier League for a few years, never really getting the breakthrough there. He's now 24 years old. To be able to pick up that kind of talent for £2.9 million, though, he should do a big poo all over the championship. He is going to be a top, top player at this level. I mean, he's proven it in the past that he is a top championship player. Now he's older and better. And um, we've also got a winger to play on the other side, Wanya Marcel Madivadua. Yep. Um, he was previously at Leicester, went to Udinese in Italy, um, spent some time on loan in Portugal as well. Half a million pounds for him. He is official. I think he's, is he English second nationality? He is. So we don't have to worry about non-EU spots, work permits, stuff like that for him, which is all good stuff. Um, we've had a few loans. The most exciting of one is this guy, John Duran, 22-year-old um, Colombian, um, who's at Aston Villa. We've spent £425 million to loan him for the year. Villa spent £14.5 million on him and then played him a lot in the Premier League. So... He should be pretty good. Um, fingers crossed we get some goals from him this year. And if not him, then we've got Ronnie Stutter, who we've signed on a free transfer from Chelsea. Um, he's a, he's my kind of striker, really. A hard-working, quite fast, pressing forward. Um, I like players like this. He's 21 years old. He's got lots of potential. He was dirt cheap. Um, I'm quite excited about the prospect of him. And then also Okan Erdogan um, is the Zima replacement. And I mean... If we can just do this every year, bring in a centre-back on a free transfer who's too good for us to partner Hughes, that works for me. So he was at Istanbul Spore um, in, the Turkish, uh, in the Turkish second tier and we've picked him up on a free transfer. He's now worth loads of money. Um, if we can sell him for 10 million next summer and do it all again... That, boys and girls, is what's known as a business model. Money-wise, because of all the transfers, we've actually got some money in the bank now. £9 million sat there. So I am begging the board to improve some of our facilities because our facilities are, are okay, but if we're going to keep churning out young players, we need them to improve. So that's something for us to work on. Um, the squad is smaller than it's been previously, but... It's smaller with a lot more quality. If you look at that as a best 11, obviously Mr. Tickle still very much a part of it. He's 24 now, played a lot of games for us already. He's, I, I just love him. His name's great and I love him because of it. Charlie Hughes, 22 years old now. His value continues to increase. He's now played 144 games for us. I genuinely think we could keep Charlie Hughes forever at this point. Kebe, who we brought in the other year, um, the main reason we sold our own youngster because he's come in and been as useful as he has. Um, this is his third year at the club. We've got Charlie Patino on loan from Everton this year to partner as well, who started very nicely in midfield. And of course, Robertson, Capone, Diallo. That front four, we've got an outside chance at a promotion push this season. Um, we've started the season very well, as you can see, um, which does leave us top of the table after six games. The media, though, think 16th place finish. Take that with a pinch of salt. 
I've played all the games during the transfer window. We'll probably stop winning them all when we're simming because the results are never quite as good when we sim. If we can make the playoffs this year, though, I'll be a happy boy. We didn't. We didn't make the playoffs. I told you to take it with a pinch of salt. We finished in 11th place, well off the pace in the end. There's just... Mm, it's not ideal. I mean, high points though. John Duran, we said he was going to be good. Uh, 21 goals from him, a 7.23 average. We'd love to keep him here permanently. There's no way we're going to be able to. He's not for sale at Villa. Um, he's actually playing for Colombia this season as well. So he is uh, he is very much quite good. Uh, Capone as well. I mean, he's now had three seasons with us. What are three seasons he's had? He's now unhappy. Um, why is he unhappy? He is unhappy because he wants me to sign a new goalkeeper. You lay off Mr. Tickle. If, if I have to choose between you and Mr. Tickle, Christian Capone, you will be packing your bags. I don't care how good you've been after joining us on a free transfer. And Ahmed Diallo, uh, is, that, is that three million pounds worth of performance? Maybe not, but it's fine. I guess someone wants Robertson as well, um, which wouldn't be ideal. He's been a key player for us for the last couple of years. And if we have a look at who our best boys are, love the fact that Charlie Hughes is still right up there, as is Mr. Tickle. Capone needs to needs to reel it in. Let's go do some more transfers. Right, we actually got, got started on selling some players early this summer. Um, so we're starting showing you the back end of last season's transfers. Um, we sold Callum Lang, who, I mean, this one this one stung. I was enjoying using our homegrown boys, but only four goals last season and a 6.88. To me, it's pretty clear he's not quite championship level and Rotherham offering two and a half million pounds for a now 28-year-old Callum Lang. It was a tough one, but we've let him go. And to be fair, based on that scouting, it was probably the right decision. And we've also lost Felix Agu as well, who could play fullback for us on either side. He was officially a right back, played for us more at left back. Um, but he had two years with us. Another one, we brought in on a free transfer. He's done two years. Uh, we've sold him on to Swansea, 2.8 million. He didn't want to renew his contract. So we make money on him. That's £5 million in the kitty before things even kick off. Um, we then did add to it with a few more sales as well. Sean Clare, who was so good for us in that League One promotion season, and to be fair, was very good last season as well. 22 goal contributions from right back and a 7.04 in the championship is decent stuff. But at 30 years old, you know me, 30... I mean, we ain't got room for pension pe passenger pensioners. So he's gone off to play in Serie A for three quarters of a million pounds. And we've also sold Jason Kerr. Similar kind of idea, really. He's now 30 years old. He's been with us all the way through. He's been great as well. Um, he's done, what, six years? He did two years before I arrived, six years. No complaints at all about his quality. But a million pounds for a 30-year-old, we're not a big enough club to turn down those kind of deals just yet. So we're not turning down those kind of deals. We've gone out and done some spending. The biggest signing of the summer was Kem Campbell, who's a 24-year-old Welsh attacking midfielder, can play anywhere across the attacking midfield. He joins us from Wolves, um, where he came through their youth system. Never really got a chance to play for them, but has had loans out at various League One and Championship clubs. I just like the versatility of him being able to play anywhere across the attacking midfield. And um, we also spent some money on Harry Clark, who's a 26-year-old right back, can also play centre back. He joins us from Norwich, who spent a million pounds on him from Luton, who spent four million pounds on him from Ipswich. So it, it's been some transfer fees for Harry Clark in his relatively young career. But once again, the main events of the summer really are in our free transfers and our loans. Um, if we pick out some of the some of the stars we've been able to bring in, Hannibal joins us from Manchester United um, on a free transfer. He's out on loan at Reims in League 1 last year. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's a player who's been in and around the Manchester United first team squad forever. Now 24 years old, can play centre mid, attacking mid, either wing. Just, again, versatility and a player who you would think would be too good for us. Um, Agustin Alvarez as well, another free transfer signing, Uruguayan international. Um, he's been playing in Serie A for Sassuolo for the last five years. Not quite a regular starter, but just getting in a squad in Serie A means you're probably good enough for us. And then we've picked up some youngsters as well. Yusuf Chemiti from Everton 
had a had a loan at Peterborough last year. Um, we've also got Charlie Webster who joins us from Chelsea. And we're just taking gambles on some of these youngsters. Thomas Galvez, already 26 Finland caps, a Manchester City youngster. So lots of decent quality young players. And we also got a player on loan from Bayern Munich, Daniele Scantamberlo, an Italian centre-back, five under 21 caps for Italy. He's under contract to Bayern Munich. That feels like a player that is too good to play for us. But he comes in and joins us on loan for the season, meaning that this is now our best 11. Young Ronnie Stutter as officially our best striker after two two goals last year. That's our best striker, two goals last year. It's definitely a weakness in the squad. It's fine because look at what we... He's just there to run about round a bit because that three he's got behind him, Hannibal Robertson Diallo, Absolutely ruined this division. Stutter's just there to run around. And um, we've also got Daniel Gore on loan from Manchester United as well. Another, we're developing a lot of Manchester United youngsters here, apparently. He'll partner Kebe. And then at the back, it's a solid defence. Mr. Tickle still in goal. The one downside of that as a best back four is that Hughes isn't a part of it. He's 23 now. Maybe progress starting to slow down a little bit. Just the three stars of current ability now. Still got time to continue getting better. And Carter Pinnington on loan from Liverpool. Or the guy on loan from Bayern Munich. I mean, he's just got to push either of them out of the team. There's a lot of loans in that defence. So fingers crossed Hughes can force his way back in as the season goes on. Once again, we've started the season strong. We're top of the table before we start simming, having won all of our games in the league, apart from that first one against Blackburn, but it was in July. Games in July don't count. It's basically a friendly. Uh, the media think we are mid-table again. I suspect they might not be far wrong. We'll see, I guess. Is that one of our boys? We have finally got somebody in the Dream 11. Ahmed Diallo is in the Dream 11. Worth noting as well that Everton are in the Championship, having been relegated from the Premier League and are expected to finish mid-table. They did get a 12-point deduction for going into administration. So Everton, not having the best times of it. And uh, I guess that's why we were able to pick up one of their good young players on a free transfer. But let's sim the season, and fingers crossed we can hold on to this form a little bit longer this time and have a proper push at those playoffs. Oh, and we really, we really did push, but ended up finishing just outside them, a seventh-place finish. We finished level on points with Hull, who did make it into the playoffs. We were so close to getting into the playoffs, but not quite close enough. Really encouraging to see Ronnie Stutter as our top scorer. See, I knew he'd be good. I never I never doubted him for a second after he only got two goals last year. 18 goals from him. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Who else are our standout boys? So Stutter, top scorer. Diallo still proving that he's very, very good for this level. Um, doing well with his goals and assists. Decent goals from the rest of that attacking bunch of players as well. Gore providing more assists than anybody. These Manchester United youngsters well worth picking up. I wonder if we can maybe pick up Gore permanently and if we have a look at who the best players are uh diallo head and shoulders above everybody else it would just be a case of trying to keep hold of him there's going to come a point where we probably can't afford his contract same with hannibal there's going to become a point where these boys contracts are going to get too expensive that he's got two years left diallo just the one year left if we can't tie him down to an extension we might be cashing in on Diallo this summer because we'll need it to uh, to fund things. Mr. Tickle still very much in the mix as a top Wigan player. I love that. Um, and Charlie Hughes as well. One of the better players at the club. Still managed 31 games last season despite competition. Now over 200 games for Wigan at only 24 years old. This is this story is as much about Mr. Tickle and Charlie Hughes as it is about me or Wigan Athletic. This is just five years in, by the way. We're at the halfway point. Have I made it into the... Uh, right, I'm on the favoured personnel. Me, Callum Lang and Christian Capone have made it into the uh, favoured personnel. That seems like a bit of a weird one. There's been better players than him. Callum Lang, I think, probably deserves it. He was homegrown at club, did very well. Had a decent season for Rotherham last year as well, but... Obviously, we want to be pushing on into... I want to get myself in the icons list, the legends list. Is Tommy Gore related to the Gore we've got? Daniel Gore. Are they related? Let me know down in the comments section. 
Let's go do some transfers. And once again, we're starting the summer with selling a few players early on to fund some purchases. Kem Campbell is one of them who's out the door. We brought him last summer for a million pounds, did not use him. He made one substitute appearance after signing for a million pounds. First big flop of the save. Being able to get half a million from Birmingham for him seems like a bit of a result. Uh, Birmingham also signing Yusuf Chemiti from me as well, the youngster that we signed from Everton. He didn't really turn up um so to generate a million pounds early on is all good stuff um what else is good stuff is we signed daniel gore permanently after he was on loan with us last year his manchester united contract came to an end and he is now a permanent wigan player how many former manchester united youngsters is that now i guess that's relatively realistic being a club sort of near manchester I think that's I think that's fine. And um, we will also be able to sign Ronnie Edwards as a Peterborough fan. This one is both sad and a bit special. Um, sad because there's no way at 25 Ronnie Edwards is being signed on a free transfer by Wigan. Um, but it is exciting to have him in. We had him on loan for the second half of last season, and then he's joined us permanently on a free transfer as well at the end of his Aston Villa contract. Ellis Sims has also joined us on a free transfer to try and get some goals. Proven championship goal scorer. A little bit older than some of our typical signings at 27. Um, but fingers crossed he should have some Premier League, not Premier League, some championship goals for us uh, this season. And then we've spent some money as well. Leo Shea, who you might remember from a couple of years ago, we had him on loan. He went back to Newcastle and didn't play. He then had a loan with Blackpool and was pretty good. Um, and we've been able to pick him up for half a million pounds. So that's him back. He's still relatively young as well. Still only 21, 21 years old. Um, so to be able to pick him up for a decent fee, pretty happy uh, with that one. We've also signed a young defender from Spurs, Isa Chinedu, who's already got three caps for Nigeria. Another one who had a loan out last season, this time at Le League One with Sheffield Wednesday. And we've picked him up as well to be our new left back. And to fund all of this, we have sold some players. Agustin Alvarez, who we brought in last summer on a free transfer, didn't really use him, sold him for 1.9 million. It's business. Free transfers are the way to go. Um, we also finally had to give up on Thelo Asgard. Um, he'd kind of drifted out of the team. He came through our own youth setup, played over 200 games for the club, but only played five times as a substitute last year. So 600,000 for him to go to Palermo seems like good business. Okan Erdogan, becomes the latest defender to be sold for big money. Not quite as big as the fellow we sold a few years ago for 10 million, but a free transfer, two good years of football, one and a half million pounds in the kitty. We take that every single time. Christian Capone has moved on as well, now 29 years old, had drifted out of the team towards, late, well, pretty much all of last season, only started one game, 22 substitute appearances. And after four years, we thank him for his hard work and cash a 1.4 million pound check. Charlie Webster didn't really work out for him at Wigan, came in from Chelsea, never really got in the team. Again, bringing these youngsters, you can sell them on for good money. It's just sensible business. And once again, we end with a transfer profit. If we actually look, what are we, six seasons in? I've now spent 6.75 million pounds and brought in 33 million pounds in transfers. That works for me. Our bank balance is still negative after all that. I'm doing my bit. I'm trying. The club are taking out loans all over the place. Although, to be fair, some of this is on improving the facilities around the club, I think. Have we? Yeah, we've improved one of these. We certainly spent some money somewhere at some point. <laughs> um, but we I get, once again, there's loads of money left. We could have spent more this summer. I just don't think we need to. Um, if we look at what our best 11 is... I don't. I mean, we could go and drop five million pounds on somebody to improve it somewhere somehow. I don't know who necessarily does that. That looks like a very good team for this level. Once again, we've started the season really strong. Uh, the media still think we're not even going to get in the playoffs. But for the third season in a row, we sat here at the end of the summer transfers in the automatic promotion spots. Ronnie Stutter, look at him going from strength to strength. Seven goals in six appearances. Never doubted him for a second. Always knew that boy would be good. And Diallo looking very good as well. We now no longer have anyone in the Dream 11. So Diallo's dropped out of it, which is a bit of a shame. But hopefully this is the year that we finally get Wigan back into the Premier League. Nope. Finished seventh, seventh again. Um, 
I mean, I guess in reality, Wigan fans probably take this after all of that nonsense we talked about in the intro. This is now four years back in the championship, three of them in the top half. We get, we are slowly but surely getting better. More points, better goal difference. We are improving. The thing about the championship, it's very annoying because every year they chuck three Premier League teams in it and you're just supposed to be able to deal with that. It's unacceptable. Stutter, Robertson, Diallo, all playing very well again. Um, lots of goals, assists from Robertson and Diallo. Charlie Hughes is unhappy. He wants a new deal. I mean, that's fair enough. He played 42 games. Charlie Hughes at 25 years old now. Remember when we thought, about, thought we'd sell him to fund the rebuild? What we've actually done is just made him a player who's going to be here forever. He's played 250 games. He is now club captain, as you would expect, at 25 years old for a centre-back who's played 250 games for us and has never played a minute for anybody else. The Charlie Hughes story is a wonderful thing. Mr. Tickle is still here as well. Now 27 years old, worth pl £20 million plus. There's another one who's played a lot of football for us. And if we look at who our key players are, Gore, obviously, Diallo, Hannibal. Thank you, Manchester United, for those three. Very much appreciated. Um, but then we've got some of my boys, Ronnie Edwards, Sam Tickle. Um, sorry, Mr. Tickle. <laughs> Mr. Tickle to you and some of those youngsters we brought in last summer. So things uh, things are working. It's not very fast. We now need to win. This needs to be a summer where we where we get to the Premier League, especially because to keep Diallo at the club last year, we had to pay him an enormous amount of money for a championship club. We might have to sell him this summer because that's a problem. And now we're potentially going to have to do the same thing with Hannibal as well, who's out of contract next summer. And he's probably going to want just as much money. The wages are starting to turn into Premier League wages. We need to get in the Premier League. Because the last thing we want to do is put Wigan into financial problems. And almost immediately, we sold Diallo. He had a non-promotion release clause at £20 million, pounds, 500000 20 and a half million pounds. You know, a normal person says that. It was a non-promotion release clause. Al Arabi paid it. So he's gone there for £20.5 million on 100 grand a week. So, of course, that does fund shenanigans. And shenanigans are absolutely what has gone on. Because as well as selling Diallo for £20 million, we've sold Ellis Sims for £4.9 million. We brought him in. He only started five games last year. He did score six goals. But to sell him for £4.9 million, absolute madness. Casey Wooster, who's a youngster that we signed on a free transfer from Newcastle, never really used Sold him for a million pounds. Uh, Kevin Alvarez, who is a youngster we signed on a free transfer last summer, sold him for three and a half million to Maccabi Tel Aviv. Um, we also sold Giannis Constellantialis, um, who we signed on a free transfer a couple of years ago. Was never outstanding enough for me to have needed to try and say his name before. Two solid seasons for us. Sold him for nearly 15 million pounds. All of that left us with big money to spend. So we went and spent it. Micah Beerith, our forever captain from over on Twitch at various points. Uh, £6 million signing from Preston. He's the Ellis Sims replacement. If you offer me £5 million for Ellis Sims and the opportunity to buy Micah Beerith for £6 million, Yes, please, I'll do that deal. So he joins us from Preston for £6 million. And um, we've also signed KK, former uh, Manchester City youngster, albeit briefly, £1.7 million for him. Brandon Williams, another former Manchester United youngster, comes in from Sunderland for £1.6 million. He is 29 now. So although he was a Man United youngster, he's certainly not a youngster anymore. Charlie Lennon, um, another winger, because, you know, we've let a few wingers go there, joins from Middlesbrough for £1.3 million. And um, we also signed Charlie Patino permanently. If you remember, we had him on loan a couple of years ago. Um, Everton then sold him to Sunderland. He never really broke in at Sunderland, but did play 11 games from in the Premier League last year. But we've been able to pick him up permanently for a cut price, £2.3 million. And then we've also signed some pretty useful 
free transfers as well. David Ozo is a Nigerian international defensive midfielder who was at Crystal Palace previously. Bringing him in means we've finally um, probably done with Ibrahim Akebe, who's been a fantastic servant. He's done five years for us. Having joined on a free transfer in League One, he goes to play for Karuna in the Spanish second tier. We've also signed Gianluca Prestiani, who's an Argentinian under-23 international winger who can play on either side. Um, was at Manchester City, um, played games here and there for Manchester City as well. Look at the value of him. Look at how much we're playing him. But look at the value of him. He should be an absolute superstar for us. And also Cesar Palacios, a former Spanish under-21 international, 24 years old. He joins from Juventus, where he played 18 times and scored five goals for Juventus in Serie A last season. I mean, decent calibre. Real Madrid and Juventus were his two clubs before Wigan. Look at how much money we've had to pay him. Like I say, we're paying Premier League wages now. Some of these wages are high. We did have to give Hannibal the big contract as well. Same with Daniel Gore, Alex Robertson. Some of these some of these wages are getting big. Um, I mean, we do have some proper superstars. If we have a look at what our best 11 is now, it is pretty special. We've managed to upgrade. We've sold, we've sold Diallo and somehow managed to upgrade the attack. Stutter, potentially still a weak point, although... He scores well when I'm controlling the matches. He's just no good when we're simming. Um, we probably still need that real out-and-out -out striker to properly compete in this league. But the rest of that team is looking very strong. Mr. Tickle, still very much a part of it as well. The game never puts Charlie Hughes in the best 11. But then when it sims, he plays every match. <laughs> and I play him in every match. I don't know why it doesn't just put him in that best 11. Because he's going he's gonna to play. He's obviously going to play. And we've also got Scantamberlo, Scantamberlo, the youngster who was on loan from Bayern Munich, um, is on loan with us still. We extended his loan. And I think we somehow managed to, at the end of his first loan, extend it for two years because we only did it once. I was very surprised on like the 3rd of July when he was still at the club. I checked and he had another year left on his loan. So we'd obviously somehow extended it for two years the year before. So he is a proper old school Kev loan them forever still only 21 still a very useful player as well. So having him still knocking around the place is jolly nice. Um, this has been our worst start to the season that we've had, though. Um, six games in, we're ninth in the league. The media think we're still kind of an upper mid-table team. Um, we're kind of relying on the simming this time. I've not been able to give us that big boost at the start. Come on. Sim like you mean it. And finally, <laughs> we have made it into the Premier League. Fifth place through the playoffs as well, no less. There is your confirmation that we have been promoted to the Premier League, beating Everton 3-1 in the playoff final. We've got Premier League budgets to play with as well. This is going to be this is going to be a very fun summer. It probably means the end of the line for Ronnie Stutter as well, which is a little bit of a shame because he's not actually first season aside, he's never really let us down. But he's obviously not going to be a champion, a Premier League quality player. Um, but he's he's had a decent four years with us, as expected. Prestiani's been great. Robertson, Hannibal, still great. Um, the one player who's been a little bit disappointing, Cesar Palacios, who I guess has just been victim of. Uh, of Robertson being at the club, only actually started nine games, is a little bit of a shame, but Robertson just continues to be fantastic. Um, if we sort by assists, Hannibal, showing that he's worth every penny of all that money that we've, that we've uh, that we decided to throw at him. We've been playing him on the left wing, by the way, forever. Um, I assume people will be telling me he should be playing centre mid, but he's only ever really played for us out on the left wing. So we don't use a centre mid. We use two DMs and an attacking midfielder. Um, so he just plays out on the left wing. He has done for three years and has been great. That's his best season that he's ever had for us. Um, if we have a look at Mr. Tickle as well, got to check in on Mr. Tickle. 28 years old now, still a hero. Check in on Charlie Hughes, 26 years old now, still our captain. Nearly 300 league games for the club now. We're in the Premier League. It's going to be fine. Goodness me, did we need to get to the Premier League when we did, because that could have caused a problem. More bank loans. <laughs> they just take out loans. That's what they do. They've, they've learned nothing. Um, as you can see, some of them have been for facilities, 
we are slowly but surely improving the facilities, but we really did need to get back in the Premier League. We've got three years left to properly establish ourselves. Maybe win a trophy. Obviously, last time Wigan were in the Premier League, they did win a trophy. It'd be quite nice to add a second trophy to the trophy cabinet. There's still just that one FA Cup. So I guess that can be a target for us for these last three years of the save. Let's try and win a trophy. So as usual at this point, we started early with our sales. Ronnie Edwards out the door. He's gone to Millwall, £4.4 .4 million. Pounds. Um, he was with us three years in total, one on loan, two here permanently. He was never really a regular starter. We've got too much quality at centre-back. So to get £4.4 .4 million pounds for him seemed like a good result. Um, and then we move into our Premier League transfers. Um, the headline of which is Daniele Scantamberlo, having been here on loan, forever has now joined us permanently um so this is his fourth year at the club first as a permanent Wigan player loves to it loves to be involved now we're in the Premier League and um, we've also thrown a lot of money at a bit of a risk Zachary White is a 21 year old English under 20 international with loads of potential we've definitely paid an English player tax 10 million pounds for a striker who last year for Luton in the championship scored zero goals but <laughs> <laughs> he's better than Stutter, right? He plays that pressing forward role that we want. I think he can be a hero. I hope he can be a hero. On the topic of heroes, I think we're probably replacing Mr. Tickle as well. Carl Rushworth has joined us as a new goalkeeper for £11 million from Columbus in the MLS. Um, so he's in. We've also spent money on Rodolfo Cortillo, um, who's a Spanish under-21 international centre-back, um, who looks, I mean, he looks really good. Look at that, three and a half stars, five-star potential, six foot six, definitely my kind of boy. Um, and then we brought in some good free transfers again. Um, if we look at Thiago Palacios, we've decided to go a little bit older. We're looking for quality at a higher level, like previous experience at a higher level. So this guy has been at Atletico Madrid. That's why he comes in. Uh, this guy has been at Leeds for years in the Premier League. Yes, he's, what, 32 years old now? But he's got all those years of Premier League experience. He's only in on a one-year deal. It just seemed sensible to put a little bit of experience throughout the squad. So he joins from Leeds. He also joins from Leeds. Again, five, six years of Premier League experience with Leeds. Those two boys know how to stay in the Premier League. So bringing them in on one-year deals to demonstrate to the rest of us how to stay in the Premier League seems like a good idea. We've also got Belal El Canus, who's another attacking midfielder, previously of Genk, and looks like he might be a bit of a superstar. Um, and Lukas Ulrich as a 26-year-old German left-back, previously of Mönchengladbach. So brought in some... Uh, some definitely proven top tier quality and we've funded it. We've done a transfer profit again. Uh, we've funded it, not just with Ronnie Edwards, but Cesar Palacios, who we looked at before, came in on a free transfer, never really got a look in in the team, was limited to substitute appearances. He's gone to Saudi Arabia in a £19 million deal. KK has gone back to Brazil. Second time he's come to England and it not really work out, but we did sell him on for a profit, which Man City didn't manage to do. They spent eight and a half million and let him go for free. We made a profit on him. So, you know, who's who's the real winners here? Ibrahim Akebe has finally left the club permanently. He had that year on loan in Spain last year. He's now gone to Empoli in Syria. And we very much thank him for an excellent however many years he was at the club. And Ronnie Stutter. We've definitely gone all in on the new boy because we got a £7 million offer for Ronnie Stutter, who is just never going to be a Premier League quality striker. And... Uh, it just seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to take that deal. So really, I would like you to look at Zachary White. And he didn't cost us £11 million. He cost us £4 million plus stutter. And I think if you look at it like that, it definitely has the potential to be a bargain. He'll score, I promise, he's going to be a good player for us. Well, we survived in the Premier League. That's a big plus. A 16th place finish. 39 points from 38 games. So we're above the Kev ratio. Um, our top scorer was not our new striker. 
which is problematic. I mean, Belal al Kanu sets a lovely season from him. 12 goals, four assists from a midfield player. That'll do nicely. Also good to see Leo Shea, um, who we spent money on a couple of years ago, stepping up to the Premier League and playing very well. 10 assists from him. Highest average rating, most assists. Good to see Charlie Hughes still knocking about the place as well. 32 starts for him in the Premier League. He's now played 322 times for the club. He's still only 27. He's still the club captain. I'm so glad we didn't sell him back at the start. What a hero he's been. Is he all-time appearance holder? Um, how do we find that out? He's not, because Mr. Tickle is. Mr. Tickle, who did force his way back into the team um, towards the end of the season. It, Rushworth was definitely the number one for a lot of the year, um, but Mr. Tickle did force his way back in. And I think Mr. Tickle might just be my first choice goalkeeper again. 29 years old now. I, with two years of the save to go, I don't know that I can abandon Mr. Tickle at this point. He's too much of a hero. Um, we only had one player who got into double figures for goals. Micah Beerith ended up with eight goals. How did my shiny new striker do? Where is he? What was his name? Is it, oh, no. We spent £10 million on him. He's not scored for two years. That that one might that one might be a problem. <laughs> We're not going to worry about it. Um, uh, Shea was the only one to get double figures for assists and also the only one who actually played any number of games for us. So, I mean, he's had a very good season. What a star he's taken. He's still only 24. What a star he is. Our best player is Shea. Um, we've got a few others who are around about there as well who you would expect to see. Um, and a few players asking to leave because they're not playing enough football. Um did we win anything? We didn't win anything. I mean, we were pathetic in the Cups. Two years left to win something or record a highest ever Premier League finish. I don't know what our highest ever Premier League finish is. How do I find that out? If we go to competitions. So last time we were in the Premier League, it was almost always relegation. If we just have to finish in the top half, if we can finish in the top half... I can try and make an argument that's the best season in the history of the club. Yes, they had a season where they won the FA Cup. They did get relegated that year, though. So I'm not having that as the best season ever. The best season ever was that 10th place finish. Because that was also the year they got to the Carabao Cup final. We just need a top half finish. We've got two years to secure a top half finish. I mean, to be fair, two years just to make sure we continue staying in the league as well. Uh, Facilities-wise, we're continuing to spend money and upgrade the facilities, um, which is very much needed money wise they've now consolidated all the debt into just one loan which i guess is fine we're able to service it relatively comfortably um that was the money left over from last season i don't know how much are they giving me for this upcoming season can we see budgets can we have budgets please um it's not that impressive is it Go again. Well, this is the closest we've got to outspending what we brought in, but we still weren't quite there. 44 million spent, 47 million pounds coming in. If we talk, if we go through the, the outs first, Alex Robertson, first one to leave. He's now 28. He has been an incredible player for six years. He played for the club for, um, was always brilliant, but last year proved he's probably not quite a Premier League player. Only six starts, only a 6.89. To get £10 million for him at 28 years old seems like good business. So Alex Robertson, thank you. Goodbye. We let some of the players that we uh, we weren't planning on keeping long term out on a free transfer as well. Um, Tiago Palacios, um, who we brought in on a free transfer last summer. Um, we've sold him for £24 million. He's now 30. We're always accepting offers for 30-year-olds. So we definitely take that one with a big old smile on our face. We actually got some big fee-paying loans as well. Um, if we have a look at some of these loan fees that we got, Lucas Ulrich, we've loaned out for £3 million. This is becoming a, a new lucrative way of doing business. Cortijo, we spent £4.7 million on. We've loaned him out for £2.5 He comes back still ours. Charlie Lennon has gone to Burnley as well for £3.4 million. So all of that adds up to £47 million. And this is how we've spent it. Jaquiel Marshall Rutty is a Canadian international who can play everywhere. We brought him in to play right back or right wing. He joins us for £21 million from Everton. Everton did make it back to the Premier League and uh, 
He played 31 times for them last year, but he comes to join us. The other big money signing was Angelo Scarponi, who is a proper statement signing for us. He's a 23-year-old Italian striker, former under-21 international, 23 under-21 caps, 16 goals. Has already made his Italy debut, two caps, one goal for Italy. Um, He was at Middlesbrough, where he scored a lot of goals in the championship a couple of years ago, 26 goals before he went off and had his big payday year in Qatar, where he also scored goals. He's joined us for 22 million and has three goals and one assist in his first three appearances in the Premier League. He is a four-star current ability striker. He is a superstar. I am very, very happy with that signing. And then we've just filled it up with some uh, some squad players, really, who we're hoping to make money on. Gabriel Mis- Misui um, is someone I remember from my Ajax rebuild that I did a couple of months ago now. I remember him being quite good in that save. Um, very much brought in with a, the intention of selling. I don't expect to necessarily play him. Bruno Iglesias also plays in that same position. We've had a lot of joy in recent years of signing attacking midfielders and selling them on for big money. So he's another one who could potentially do that. Peter can play on either wing. He's 29, but he was free and he's got plenty of La Liga experience. So that seemed like a sensible signing. Danny Motta is another older experienced Premier League player that we've brought in just to continue having some older Premier League experience in the squad. He joins on a free transfer from Crystal Palace. Um, And of course, we brought in another Manchester United youngster, Elliot Poppleton, for £400,000. If we have a look at what our best eleven is now, Scarponi, of course, is in there. Al Canus, who was our top scorer last year, will be our attacking midfielder with Hannibal on one side, Peter on the other. Gore and Ozo have been together for a little while now. Ozo, this is his third year at the club. Daniel Gore has been our starting centre mid for five years now. So that's an established partnership. Um, You've got Charlie Hughes at 27, club captain, very much established, as is Mr. Tickle. Brandon Williams potentially could do with an upgrade at 30 years old. We could probably do with a better left back, but Shah has obviously been fantastic at right back, and we've got plenty of options at centre back. One of them, uh, Murray Campbell, joined us from Rotherham last year, but there's loads of players who could play there. That looks like a team that should be good enough to survive again. Decent start including a 5-1 win over Wolves, uh, means that we're 11th in the league after three games. We'll take that. Most notable, though, Liverpool have now gone into administration. A nine-point deduction for them leaves Liverpool bottom of the league. Could Liverpool get relegated this season? Wouldn't that be a thing? Well, Liverpool didn't get relegated, but neither did we. We finished above them. A 12th place finish for us. Still not quite a best ever finish. Um, But our fancy Italian striker, Angelo Scarponi, uh, finished our top scorer on 13 goals for him. So very happy with him. We don't want clubs lurking around. Get lost, Aston Villa. We want to keep him. Uh, Leo Shaha, by the way. Fantastic again. What a bargain of a £500,000 signing he was. Um, double figures for assists in uh, in both of the last two years in the Premier League. And Charlie Hughes, once again, with his, I mean, he's just good at doing pass completion, isn't he? 353 matches now for him. It's basically a race between him and Mr. Tickle to see who's going to be the all-time appearance holder at the end of the save. I think it's, it is still Mr. Tickle at the moment. Um... Yeah, Mr. Tickle on 362. Callum Lang is still our all-time top scorer. How many has Hughes got? So it's 362 for Mr. Tickle, 353 for Hughes. With one more year to go, it could be either of them who finishes the save as our all-time record appearance holder. They have both been absolutely incredible throughout this save, and neither of them are even on the favoured personnel list. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, nobody. No, I mean, the the only people who've made it under favoured personnel from this save, me, Leo Shea, which is very fair enough, Hannibal and Daniel Gore. Nobody's made it onto the icons list. Both of those boys should be club legends for just being the core of the team that's taken Wigan back to the Premier League. But clearly I don't get a vote when it comes to this kind of thing. Right. Final season. How much money have we got to spend ahead of our final summer transfer window? Decent money, particularly decent wage budget. Let's go and see if we can win something or get ourselves into the top half. Either of them 
is a win. And once again, we started the summer selling off lots of players uh, from the year before to fund the transfers, the most notable of which Gianluca Prestiani, um, who, if you recall, we signed on a free transfer. Um, he was fantastic when we were down in the championship, 20 goal contributions that season, but it's kind of very much drifted out of contention. I only started three games last year and Brentford in the championship offered us £44 million pounds for him. I drove him there myself because that's insane. That might be our most expensive sale ever. Um, let's check the club records. And that is the biggest sale in the history of this football club. It's absolute madness. Uh, Zachary White, we cut our losses on. Uh, he scored one goal for us in two years. That's one goal in three years in his career in total. I don't know how, again, Bristol City, what were they thinking? I dropped him off on the way to Brentford. <laughs> I've been doing, I've done a lot of driving this summer. And then if we move on into the summer we've actually had, don't read too much into that. Remember, you've got to add that 60 million, that 50 million we've just looked at onto that number. So we still operated at a transfer profit this season, which means every season of the save, we've done a transfer profit. I'll show you the final numbers in a second. Um, but we did sell Carl Rushworth, who we signed for 13 million. He did displace Mr. Tickle temporarily, um, but he was on loan at Sunderland last season and has now joined them permanently for eight million pounds. So that's Mr. Mr. Tickle is our starting keeper for the full 10 years of the save. We pretend Rushworth never happened. Um, we've sold this guy who we signed on a free transfer last year. He's another one. Brought him in on a free transfer, didn't really use him. Eight and a half million pounds. Boom. It's just easy money. This is how you make your money, boys and girls. This guy bought for 1.2 million, didn't really use, sold for 4.9. Uh, Monsieur, I mean, I literally told you I signed this guy to do this with him. Brought him in on a free transfer. He did start nine games, um, but gone to Al Hilal for twenty one and a half million pounds to fund shiny new things. Uh, Chinedu, the defender we signed from Spurs a few years back, he'd been a useful squad player for three years, but Hoffenheim have offered us three million pounds for a player who only started once last year. Again, it's another no brainer. Um, and then. Spenzies. This is where we've spent the money. Kareem Kanate is the latest in a long line of players who I am determined to prove can be good strikers. That's It's been one of the most challenging things in this entire save, trying to find a striker who can score for us consistently because they're so expensive. Um, but we spent £17 million on this guy from Fulham who got eight Premier League goals last year. He's already got three in four for us at the start of this season on a 7.35. So maybe, finally, we've got the one. We also signed Raddy Godbani, who is a 21-year-old Tunisian right-back. Um, he comes in from Al Ain for £19.5 million to compete with Shea at right-back. He can also play right-wing, midfield, centre-back as well, so a bit of a utility man. Doesn't necessarily mean the end for Shea, who has been fantastic throughout the save. Andrea Del Grosso is an Italian under-19 international right-winger. Um, we're starting to bring in the Wonder Kids now. I mean, he's not officially a Wonder Kid, yeah, that guy's a wonder kid. That's clearly a wonder kid, isn't it? We know that's a wonder kid. Uh, Emilian Siobanu, uh, Romanian centre back, six foot two, three caps for Romania already at 18 years old, 3.3 million pounds. Again, I mean, he literally is a wonder kid. He's labelled as a wonder kid. Um, and that's definitely the kind of players we're looking to bring in now. Um, Ayo Kazuma is a Japanese international, 23 years old. He's our most expensive signing in our history, £28.5 million for a centre-back who we're probably thinking of playing in centre-mid rather than centre-back. He's only five foot ten, but I think he'll make a great uh, defensive central midfielder for us. Uh, Nenad Ilic is another pretty much wonder kid 23 years a little bit too old to be a wonder kid um but bargain signing at 1.4 million pounds ramiro Rolon martinez is an argentinian attacking midfielder uh, under 23 international um who joins us for 4.4 million pounds luis is a brazilian winger left winger this time um who joins us straight out of brazil for nine million pounds and then lastly possibly most excitingly of all, is another actual legitimate wonder, hit, wonder kid. Adrian Tezak is a 19-year-old Croatian full international centre-back and uh, he joins us for £2.3 million. Pounds. Our best 11 is starting to look really quite snazzy. Mr Tickle is still in 
the game generated best 11 all these years in Hughes doesn't even make it onto the bench anymore. I, I mean, he is still in reality playing. I'm still playing him. The matches I've managed, he's still started all of the matches. Um, but I suspect the simming might not be so generous with game time for him. So we'll see how that pans out. But that, as a best 11, has started the season pretty well. We've beaten Manchester United. Mr. Tickle had a testimonial, by the way. The Tickle testimonial absolutely worth it's taken me a week to make this video it's worth it for tickle testimonial to be something that's in the game we also beat southampton and blackburn but lost to liverpool which means four games in we are in a champions league qualification spot i don't expect us to finish there but remember if we finish ninth or above it's the best season in the history of the football club the media think we are good enough now to avoid relegation i just hope we're good enough to get that top half finish that's what we want that's what we're aiming for. Can we manage to do it? Of course we can. We've finished in eighth place, which will be the best ever finish for this football club. Um, in fact, there's your confirmation of it. Record high finish for Wigan. Not only is it a record high finish, I think when all is said and done, we'll be back in Europe as well for only the second season in the history of the club. Because if you look at the last few seasons of the Premier League, there's always eight teams getting into Europe, um, apart from that year. In fact, even that year, Norwich got into the Europa League when they were relegated. Um, but there's always at least eight teams getting into Europe. So as it stands at the moment, that fifth place spot that goes to the Champions League hasn't been allocated. It will do. I'm sure it will. There's no reason why it won't. Uh, everything else will trickle down. So I think we're going to be in the, champ in the Conference League next year as well. So best, se best season in the history of the club and a return to European football didn't... I mean, our cup form has been absolute bobbins. We are not a cup team, so we didn't win anything. Um, but Karim Kanate, 18 goals for him. Maybe he was the maybe he was the solution. Maybe he was the answer. Um, Scarponi, who I thought was going to be, only three goals from him this season. I, I feel like he was probably being played out wide by the AI a lot because he started 26 games and Canate started... 35. So Scanate started almost every game. We play a one-striker system, so I think Scarponi probably played out wide. Assists-wise, they've been shared around relatively uh, relatively generously. Um, and best players who've actually played? I mean, God Banny, who we spent a lot of money on, couldn't push Shea out of the team, which personally, very proud to see that. Shea has been an absolute standout the second half of this. And uh, our best player, Scarponi. A lot of these boys who might be moving on. Daniel Gore has been a fantastic player as part of this save. Um, but of course, the real star, Mr. Tickle, who ends the save the same way he started it as our starting goalkeeper. He has now played 399 league matches for Wigan Athletic. Um, Charlie Hughes... Let's just check how close he got to the record. Charlie Hughes has played 385 league matches for Wigan and has been our captain for years. He's now 29. Both of those boys have been with us for all 10 seasons as starters. They've taken us from the bottom half of League One back into Europe, back into the Premier League, which is incredible work from them. Um, we did manage to get Leo Shea onto the icons list. So the game thinks he's been the best player of the save, which I would struggle to argue with. He has been brilliant. Um, Mr. Tickle did make it onto the favoured personnel, so that's nice to see, along with me, Gore and Hannibal. And we also made some improvements to the ground as well. The DW Stadium has been expanded. Our facilities continue to get better. And here's your proof that we did it whilst being financially sensible. We've got the Champions League FFP on there. I don't think we're going to be in the Champions League. Um, but there is a little bit of debt at the club. They love taking on these little loans. I don't really know why they keep doing it because there is money in the bank. Uh, the projection is still not ideal. But obviously, we've kept the club afloat with positive transfers all these years it's still not really self-sufficient just from day-to-day -day running um but in 10 years we've spent 191 million pounds on 87 players sold 65 players for 252 million so a nice little net transfer profit of what 60 or so million pounds in 10 years we got 
Wigan there. We I think you'll find that's Wigan rebuilt, best ever Premier League finish, back in Europe whilst being financially sensible and not ruining them. That was 10 years of hard, hard work, but we got there. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about these longer rebuilds. Certainly can't do one like this every week. Like I say, it has taken a long time to put together. But if you like this kind of video, there'll certainly be more stuff like this coming up in the future. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up. Check out some of the other rebuilds, some of the other content on the channel as well. Subscribe if you're new. And thank you very much for watching.